they don't know They can get shots, they show to blow a shit Knocks them down like dominoes Yeah, the pronouns, photos All those jokers, they don't know They can get shots, they show to blow a shit Knocks them down like dominoes Yeah, the pronouns going on? Jared Poland. Fro knows. Photo. Photo.com. Thank you all, especially you down there for coming out today. I, I had my eye on you. Um, so what is going on? You guys having a good time yet? Yeah, yeah. yeah man, we're not even having a good time. Shannon, are you having a good time? Always. So I want to thank the Apple Store for calling me and setting this up because I'm going to talk about some stuff. Apple stuff? Perfect. Hopefully. So I did, I put my my gum on a piece of paper because okay, it's, it's eye paper because I'm not allowed to chew gum and do videos at the same time. It's, it's bad. So I did write down a few things to talk about, but I will open it up to questions and answers at the end because I know you have questions, right? Yes. Definitely. All right. So being that we're at the Apple store, I thought it would be cool to break out the iPad and talk about portfolios as an iPad. I get an email all the time. Shannon probably emailed me once and said, is a portfolio a good, oh geez, I messed that up. Is an iPad a good portfolio? What do you think? Yes, well I work, yes. You think it is a good one? I do. Now I'm stuck in the middle. I'm stuck in the middle for multiple reasons and I forgot to bring my book as a demonstration, but that's okay. The iPad is awesome when you're traveling and you wanna just show people your photos. That is good. Now, everybody's going to have an iPad. I think the novelty has worn off that when you hand it to somebody, they're not going to be all like, ooh, it's an iPad. I don't want to look at your photos. Because when it first came out, when you would hand it to somebody, they'd be like, wow, the iPad is really cool. And they wouldn't even look at your photos. So that's not a good thing. But what I find, it's twofold. You know those Adorama Picks books that I'm using? They're really, really solid. And I love that I can put a 9 by 12 book on the table, open it up, and have a full page 12 by 18 spread. That makes an impact. When you show somebody a picture that's this big right in front of them, that's going to make more of an impact than the iPad. You disagree, don't you? Uh, no. But you should also have the iPad to show extra work. You can show your videos because now that we're moving into videos, we're going to get into that second today, talking about videos and Macs and all that good stuff. But, you know, I carry this around. I load it up with a lot of different portfolios. I don't have an actual app for portfolios. Do you have an app for portfolios? Uh, we'll get the mobile me gallery. I'm telling you don't run the company line, Shannon. I'm just telling you, that's, that's probably, there's a lot of to do gallery it, apps. Well, right, but to do it wireless, uh, without being connected to the internet. I know there's one. My buddy Adam has it. It's I think it's only like 14 bucks, 15 bucks, and it, it just allows you to hand it to somebody, and all they get is just the the uh, portfolio, you know, because if you hand them the photos, then they have to go through and they can see your other photos that you may not want them to see if you have those on there. Um, so let's talk about building a portfolio. Andy, building a portfolio. What do you think, how many pictures do you think you should have in there? Uh, 15 to 20. 15 to 20? What do you think? I'd say 10 to 15. 10 to 15. And should it be on the same subject, or should you do three pictures of, say, a runner, three pictures of, say, a concert, and then another eight pictures of your dog or cat? What do we think? Variety. I don't want a variety in there. No. You know why I don't want a variety in my portfolio? Because I want each portfolio to be separate. So I have, a, I have um, seven or eight different portfolio books, those hardback books. Each one, I have a sports book, I have a travel book, I have a music book, I have candids, and it just, it goes on and on. So you have different books. So what you really want to do is put in your 15 to 20 best images that all work together. Try not to repeat the same images or similar images from time to time. You know, you just want to keep it 15 to 20 of your best solid images. The reason you do that is because it, it, it you're going to confuse people. You, if you're going for a specific job, that's what you want to tailor your portfolio to. Does that make sense? Because if you're going for a, say, a concert job, you want to go shoot bands and you show up with a wedding album, they're probably not going to hire you because you're not showing them something similar to what they would be hiring you for. So, you know, when it comes to, when it comes to the portfolio, if you do the 15 to 20 best, 
make sure that you still have another 20 behind it that you can use when they ask to see more work. Because when I do weddings, I let people see 350 to 400 pictures from five different weddings. It's up on the website. So what, what I'm trying to do is I, I show them a, a, an album, a good album, and they go, wow, these are really awesome. And I feel that I want to show them more. Because there are photographers out there that will show you the 20 best photos, and they have nothing else other than that. So they really went through a wedding. They shot, overshot 2,000 pictures, and then they start putting together a portfolio book with just the 20 best. So you never know what you're going to get with that. So I, I like to have a safe keeping of extra photos that everybody can see to prove that it's not just you know, 20 good images. There's a lot more behind that. So that, that's good. Portfolios. What other portfolio question, Andy? Put you on the spot. Yeah. You don't know? Well, you know what I am doing? You, you guys have seen the uh, portfolio, the, the 10 best shots rapid fires. I'm doing that rapid fire thing, the Adorama picks thing. That's really good. So we, if you don't know, the people in the room don't know what I'm doing. Just basically have uh, a photographer send me 10 of their best images and we rapid fire critique it on Skype and then throw it up online and uh, Basically, it's good. I get to be harsh if I want to be harsh, and don't get to be harsh if I don't want to be harsh. Can, I har can, can you send me work? Yes. I'll look at it. Okay. Is that good? Sure. You didn't know this was going to be interactive, Shannon? I do now. You didn't think it was going to be interactive? <laughs> I like interactivity. It's fun. I appreciate it. So portfolios are, you know, you need to put your best foot forward. And, and it's not just a iPad, it's not just those hardback books, but you need a website, right? You need some place to put it. And a MySpace page, which nobody uses MySpace anymore, is not a website. Uh, Facebook, you really, you can put your portfolio there, but you gotta know that Facebook technically says they have the rights to use your images if you upload it to them, which you could sort of get around legally, but they, sh they say they have the rights to use them. So you could see a picture that you took being used in an advertisement that is not a good thing. I don't like that. So I try not to post too many pictures up on Facebook. So that's why your own type of website, I mean, you can build with WordPress a very simple website that just, you want to hit them with your email, your phone number, and the best of your, you know, the best of your work. That's what you want to hit people with. Um, so that when they find you online, you're directing them back to your website, and then you're all set. So yeah, don't put too much on the Facebook. I love Facebook, but it's just not the major place for your portfolio to be. What was that? It kills the quality. Well, yeah, and Facebook has really terrible quality. Like you can see on my website right now, I've got um, this is Slideshow Pro, and it will make the photos full screen and resize them to uh, make them look really good. So, you know, I picked some of my best images and put them in here, and it just cycles through. And I rarely, you know, rarely touch them. So I know, Andy, you asked me a question. You said, uh, how do you get into concerts, right? How do you get into shows, and how do you do it? And you're not looking to get paid yet. We all want to get paid at some point, but free work does take you a long way. You got to remember, if, say you go to a, like a charity event. You're into a charity event. Well, free work, I see you laughing. But, I, I say that all the time. Well, you, you, it gives, like, I rarely did things for nothing back in the day when I started. I thought that I was too good. I thought that I could just do whatever I wanted and make it without having to work for another photographer, without having to give my stuff away. I, you know, I know my work is good, and I thought that that was enough, but it's not enough. You have to get out there and talk with people, because if you do a job for somebody for nothing, make sure you're getting something in return. Don't let them walk all over you. So if you're going to go shoot a concert, or you want to shoot a concert, do you have bands that you like, that you know? Do you know any bands, personally? All right, do you know how to connect with a middle-level band? How many ways can you connect with them? Don't go to MySpace, because nobody uses MySpace. Facebook, you just Google it. Google the band. They usually have their manager's name on there, right? So you can, you can email the manager. You can say that you're shooting what you're looking to do. You want to have an affiliation. It's all about an affiliation. If, you, if you're not affiliated with somebody when it comes to music or comes to getting into a venue or something like that, you're never going to get let in. So there's a million music websites out there. Just email them, say, hey, I'm, I'm learning. 
I'm looking to build my portfolio, shooting concerts. Send them some of your work. It may, it may not be music work, but just show them the quality of the work that you already do. That's going to be good. So you send it to them. Hopefully they let you, you know, hopefully they say you can use us as, a, as an affiliation so that when you email the managers or the bands directly, because some of the small level, level bands, you can get their emails, you can get their Facebook pages, you can connect right with them. Just say, listen, here's the work that I do. Lead with, the, lead with your quality work because you always want to lead with that. You don't want to just talk and be like, I love you and don't do that. Don't be like, I am a big fan. I am your biggest fan and I want to love you paparazzi. Lady Gaga, I you, but you didn't smile. I was, I was very focused on your work. Well, then I'm going to stop my work so you can pay attention. Everybody out there, Shannon's not paying attention. Sorry. You should send her to the corner. I'm already. She's already in the corner. <laughs> so anyway, you can email the bands directly and just say, listen, I am a photographer. I would like to come in and photograph your band, and I'm going to give you the images to use online for nothing. So you just told them you're going to give them something. You limited it to just online. You're not saying I'm going to give you pictures to do whatever you want with forever. You're saying I'm going to give you pictures to use online in exchange for giving me the access. That, the band members may not ask for the affiliations, but the managers and PR firms are going to ask for the affiliations. So the, you know, that's the one thing when you get to the PR guys, hey, I'm, photogra I'm photographing for so-and-so website. Here are samples of my work, and it gets easier as you go on. As you get samples of work, obviously, then you have more to play on. But when you show them your work, you go, look, the work speaks for itself. I'm going to come in and shoot, and you know what? I'll, I'll send you low-res images to use online later, you know, after the shoot as an exchange. So you're, you're kind of just taking the sting out of it right away. You're not some fan. Because if you're just some fan, you're not gonna, they're not going to really want you there. Because you don't want to be a fan at these shows. You want to just work. You're there to shoot, and if you're, if you're a fan, you just, you're going to get yourself in trouble. So you don't want to do that. Does, that be, does all that make sense? Because you just want to, you want to, I know, you want to get in. And that's the, the hardest thing for people to know is, is how to get in. And I just really gave the basics of getting in. What's something that you want to shoot? Um, like weddings, and I like shooting like newborns, children. Okay. Engagements. Do you want to know exactly how to do it? Sure. <laughs> what? Are you having trouble now finding jobs? Right now, um, I do get paid to do certain things, okay. but um, not as many clients as I would like to have. So Are you utilizing your Facebook? Um, Facebook, and I have like a free kind of like WordPress, like a free okay. website that I have everything. The best, the best thing to do, you have friends, right? Yeah. Friends are having kids. Friends have families. Friends have animals. Friends have just a little bit of everything. Offer to shoot them. Photograph them. For free? Well, if they're close, they weren't going to pay you anyway, right? <laughs> they're not going to pay you anyway. Take the pictures maybe, and say to them, listen, you can use them on your, on your Facebook page. If you would like to get prints made in the future, then you, know, you can come back and you can buy that or buy me dinner one night. I mean, there's barter. Barter's the greatest. When you can trade for things, I mean, if somebody owns a clothing store and they need photographs of the mannequins with the clothes on there, you can say, listen, I'll do that, but pay me in clothes. So you know, normally you'd get paid, say, $1,000 for the shoot. They know they're going to give you the thousand dollars worth of clothes isn't really a thousand dollars worth of clothes because it, their cost is a lot less. So that's that's a that's a way in. But you you want to get the photos to them with your watermark if you want to do a watermark or make sure that they give you credit so that people know it's your photograph so that when they put it on Facebook, when they paste it to their wall or upload it, all their friends get to see it. And now there's people that you may not know, right? So you may not know their friends, but now they're seeing photographs. Because you did that one job for free, their friend sees those photos and goes, wow, I love those photos. How do I go about doing that? Or how do I get, you know, I want them to shoot my picture. So now they call and just, you got to make sure your friend isn't all like, oh, they did it for free for me because they're so cool. It's like, no, once, you're, once you get past that separation of friends, it's like, okay, I can do it. You just need to figure out what you're going to charge, which you've, you've probably done before, right? You figured out what you're going to charge. Some, I know it's difficult. It always is difficult to know what to charge. But just think of what you get at your job. What do you get for your hourly wage? And then say, all right, I get this for my hourly wage. What, do you, what should I be getting paid for doing photography? It should be more than that, usually. Take into consideration your travel. 
take in consideration your time for shooting and what we call the creative fee, which is the actual photographing. Uh, don't let people tell you you just push buttons or take pictures because you're supposed to be capturing moments, right? So where was I going? What was I saying? I lost my, Shannon, are you paying attention? Because I lost my train of thought. Where was I going with that? That was two statements ago. How much, that was, that was How much to charge? How much to charge? All right. So when, when, you're, when you're setting that up, don't forget travel, creative fee, and then editing. Those are the three things you have to take into consideration. Figure a, a photograph of a little child, kid, two, three years old, running around the park with their mother or something, and you're going to do a photograph. Figure it's half an hour for driving. Well, one way, another way is a half an hour. So figure an hour for transportation. That's one hour you're charging them for. Figure an hour to two hours for photographing to get what you need. A couple different, situ a couple different areas in the same place. You're in a park, so you have a tree. Then you have the playground. Then you have a bench. You have different areas to shoot them from, right? So then that's two hours. Then you already accounted for the travel home, but then you figure you need another hour for editing. So you're looking at four hours. What, you, know, you have to say, what is my time worth, right? So if it's $50 an hour, that's not bad, 200 bucks. If it's more than that, you know, if you want to charge $225, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it is a lot, you know? Imagine if you throw in one of those a week or a couple of those a week, just what happens as you just grow. And then the more people that you shoot, then the more people that put their pictures up on uh, photo, uh, Facebook, and then the more friends that see it, it's, it's the whole viral nature of it. But you just have to get used to doing it. And there's nothing wrong with going out and photographing for, for free. Just don't let people walk all over you. You dictate the terms. I know it's hard to do. It's hard to dictate the terms, but if you're coming in for nothing, you say, listen, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to photograph, but this is what I need you to do for me. So free is OK. Just don't get stuck doing everything for free and be that free photographer. What's that smirk? You said it's not okay? I mean, no, it's cool. I understand where you're coming from. Amazing. Just saying, like, right now, that's kind of... It's tough. It's, that's where she's stuck in the moment. Like, she'll do free things for people, and then when she looks for paid, you know, sessions, it's harder because people want free all the time. They want free all the time? Find, find a way around it. I mean, find something that they can do for you. I mean, get them to... Uh, well, yeah, you have to get them to pay. Just be like, do you work? Do you get paid to go to work? This is my job. So I get paid to do my job. Sometimes you have to say no. You know, if you get stuck in that rut, you just have to say no. It's hard, but fine. You know, you could always go shoot for. One of the things that I've, that I did wrong as a photographer was I never worked for another photographer. So I should have been looking for somebody to to be an understudy of that could take me around, that could show me the ropes. I mean, even if you're doing it for a hundred dollars a week or whatever, whatever they throw you, even if it's free, you're learning a ton from somebody who's successful in the field. So you have to try to find somebody like that. It's, it's, it's difficult, but you can just call around and be like, listen, I'm learning. Can I come in and assist on a wedding? Can I assist on a photo shoot? Can I do this? Can I do that? That's, the best. That's another good angle. It's, it is a learning process. And it's just the more you shoot, the more your work gets better. Just make sure you get it out there and you show people and you, and you keep going from there. Good, good. Shannon, how are we doing? Good, you have 20 more minutes. Don't, 20 minutes? A whole 20 minutes, Shannon? Yep. Well, are, whose iPhone are you going by? Mine. Mine says 525. Yeah, well, we have to clean up this guy. I mean, we have to clear out all 40 people. <laughs> That's going to take a while. It's going to take time. All right, but before I get into the next thing that I want to talk about, I do have this shirt here. It's 3D. Do you want to try it? Sure. Red over the left eye. Right over no, but did, rotate it. Turn it around. Oh. There you go. Does it look 3D to you? Yeah. That's right. See it? Oh, wow. That is cool. That is cool. Um, so let's get into the next thing. Now that we have digital SLRs that are doing video, we have to learn video. You can't be afraid of video. Is anybody here afraid of video? You're afraid of video? 
Don't be afraid of video. Shannon, tell them not to be afraid of video. Don't be afraid of video. Look at them in the eye. Look at them in the eye and say, don't be afraid of video. Yeah, you probably shouldn't be. What, afraid of video? All right, Shannon says, don't be afraid of video. So when it comes to video, you have to, you have to embrace it. We are in a changing world. Photography is, should be your main focus because still images still, I think, are much better than moving images because uh, they capture a moment. So when you capture a moment, you're, you're much better off. Uh, but with that said, we're recording on a D7000 with the wireless Sony microphones that, you know, this is, I had to learn it. And I didn't, I didn't fight it. I didn't want to fight it because when I got the D3S, it did video and I had to learn it. So I forced myself to sit there and learn how to get the settings right, which being a photographer, you, under, you already understand your ISO, your aperture, and your shutter speed. It plays a little differently with video, but I know you have a D7000. Have you tried video? Yeah, I have. And what have you noticed? I mean, I, I haven't used it too much. Okay. So I'm kind of afraid of it. Well, don't be afraid. <laughs> Shannon, tell her not to be afraid of it. So don't be afraid of the video. Practice, learn, embrace it. Uh, but again, video is harder. It's harder because now you have to edit it. So what do, you use to edit? what do you use to edit? Well, I have iMovie right now on my iMac. I have one of these. Can I do a product plug? No, I'm not doing a product plug. They can see it right there. And they know that I use an iMac. But no, I, use an, I have a 27-inch iMac. And I use iMovie because I'm waiting for the new Final Cut to come out, which reportedly will be $299. Nobody here told me anything. I read it on a rumor website. There. How's that? Not official. Not official. I said a rumor website. <laughs> so anyway, I'm waiting for that. You, you, iMovie's really good. Do you have a Mac? No. It's all right. There's a, you have a PC? Yeah. There, there are some free softwares on there, I think. Should it should come with it. So you can just play with it. Just play with editing video. Even if it doesn't come with it, there's like $50. $50 softwares uh, just to at least learn it. But learning, learning editing video is going to be something that you're going to use in the future. It's just you're going to shoot a lot more video. But let me just say this. When you're shooting a show or you're shooting a job and they want video and they want photos, you, you literally have to tell them, listen, I'm here to do one or the other. I can't do both at the same time. If you get stuck in that rut where you want to take a picture and then quickly switch to video, what's going to happen? Andy, what's going to happen? Basically, yeah, you're going, to miss, you're going to miss what you came to do. You're going to miss the video that you wanted to shoot, and you're going to miss the photo that you want to, wanted to shoot because you're futzing around with your settings and, and whatnot. So what I do if I'm going to do both is I'm going, to, I'm going to start half of the day doing video. Then as soon as I'm done that, no more video. I go right into doing still photos. And then I don't even think about doing video again because you have to be in the mentality that... I'm either going to shoot photos or I'm going to shoot video. I can't do both at the same time. And it really sucks that you can't do both. Can I say sucks? Yeah. I can't. You, it sucks that you can't do both at the same time because you really, you know, I, I would love to do both. But when I'm shooting a concert, I have to focus on either shooting video or shooting photos. Because if I try both, I'm, I'm going to miss everything. And I don't want to miss everything. But don't be afraid of it, all right? Are you afraid now? No, it's not as scary anymore. They're not scared anymore, Andy. No, they don't look scared. So don't be, don't be afraid of video. Just, just play with it. Do, do you have any video questions? You, I know you have a D90. Yeah. Um, actually, me and my buddy are starting up a business called shooting cars, like high key lighting. Okay. Right. Sure. Are you looking to put it in the car? Which they have. So, so what, the, what Andy said he's looking to do uh, is to do video of in cars. So you would do photos and video. Right. Well, that, that's good. I mean, that's good if you would have two people to do that. And then you need to worry about the editing. Um, I know I use Lightroom. I don't use Aperture. I can say that, right? What's the aperture well, Aperture's all right. Um, say it's, I have Lightroom. I know. We'll move on from that. I'm getting evil eyes. Don't, Shannon, don't give me evil eyes. How do we move on? 
is Steve going to come by? I don't, don't dance, oh, hey, if he shows up, that would be really fun, wouldn't it? Oh. Well, anyway, so but uh, we know that I use the iMac anyway to edit my stuff because it just works, doesn't crash all the time. Um, I don't know, works well. If it doesn't matter, just whatever you're going to edit, edit. That's what it comes down to. Uh, so we got, Shannon, how are we doing on time? Good. I know you're watching the clock on me. Do you have any questions? I don't. How do you not have any questions? I will come up with something. All right, you think of something because I want to answer it. Okay. All right. Um, so back to the video, basic things when you're starting. You have a D7000, you know how to turn it on, right? Yes. You know how to get the video running. So stability, do you have a tripod? Yes. So for video, very good. but it's something, right? So it's going to give you some stability. That's what you want to focus on when you're doing the video, is be stable. So you want to still do your same, you can get into manual, you can set all your settings yourself. What, what lenses do you have? Do you have any? Not very good. Well, what do you, do you have? have? I have the kit lens. Okay. All right, even with the 70 to 300, from a distance, you can blow the background out. So if you're going to focus in on, say, a kid playing, and you just want to give a bonus something to, to, a, to a mother, and you want to do some video of the kids just playing in the background and then cut it to some music or something like that, you just sit from a distance, just play with your focus. And it does have autofocus. That's an, it's another thing to think about, because then you could charge for that. When, somebody, when you find somebody who really wants to pay, now they can pay you extra for doing some video that they have of their kids. Ideas, right? Yeah. There's so many ideas. It's, ideas. It, it's endless ideas. Um, I'm just going to let this roll because I know Shannon wants to see more photos. <laughs> you don't want to see any more photos? Well, they're going to run right there. Perry Farrell. I don't really know what else to uh, ask you guys. What other photo-related things could I go into? Andy, you have any more questions? Not really, no. No? What are you shooting these days? So you want to do cars and concerts? Concerts, I mean, I would, everything. Portraits, street portraits, everything. I'm like, there's nothing I want to shoot. Right. So did you, when it comes to car photography, what has been your angle? Have you been trying to go in through magazines? Um, not yet. Um, we're actually, we just started thinking about doing, like, the lighting, like, off-camera flash and strobe and stuff like that. Sure. Oh yeah, it's a, they can see the photos cycling through the back. Um, yeah, this, was, this was fun, that was South by Southwest in 2007. Uh, that's good stuff. So let me just go into what, what I like doing with uh, shooting musicians. We all know I love doing the candids. It's just getting into places that other people usually do not get the opportunity to get into. So it's like being backstage or being in the Roots studio. I like the Roots, they were fun. Got to be in the studio for like 10 hours. Um, you can do all of the behind the scenes stuff. So to me, candids are much better than setup shots. Because when you start getting into setup shots or shooting live shows, you're in front of the stage, there's 14 other photographers at this one venue that's shooting the same thing from the pit. Then the band goes to the next city and there's another 14, but then there's nobody but, you know, backstage. And if you can talk your way in or get yourself in backstage, you're gonna set yourself apart from everybody else. That's just, that's one way of doing it. Um, I know that's what I did. I um, basically would just walk backstage, find a tour manager, start talking, asking questions, showing my work. So I would carry around a little portfolio book. Uh, not always, I mean, the iPad's not the easiest thing to carry around all the time. You know, camera bag sometimes it won't fit, but you know, I walked, used to walk around with a little book. You could always show on your phone, but your phone's a little small if you have an iPhone. So that's not always ideal, but it still works. Um, you want to talk about weddings? Um, sure. Have you done any weddings yet? I've done like two. By yourself? No, it was actually like just friends' weddings that I just, you know, kind of was a guest to. Right. Like, did they have you do work or they, they yeah, ask you they to shoot? They liked my work. Some of the work they liked better than the paid photographer's work. Well, that's, that's yeah. a positive. Have them write you a testimonial and put that testimonial on your site. Have them say, I hired a photographer, yet you were a guest and took better photos. That's going to go a long way when people read that. Just ask them if you could use the quote and use some of the photos. Have you tried booking any of your own weddings? No. No, I've kind of just stayed to like children and families and things like that. I just want to get a little better before I just branch out. Cause sure. I know it's a lot to do with a wedding. It is. It is. Weddings are a lot of work, not just 
booking, contracts, you need insurance when you do most, I mean, you, don't, you may not need it to start, you should have it. Equipment insurance, I mean, insurance is really important when it comes to your gear, because if somebody steals it, you're, you break it, you drop it, it needs to be covered because you need to keep shooting, you need to keep working. So it's a, it's a small investment that I run, or that I have, I don't know, what a, four or five, probably about $600 a year in insurance. But it, no, but it, it's that, that mind, put your mind at ease when you've, when you've got it. So it's good to have. Um, but some angles, you, let's see if we can think of some angles for shooting more uh, children. Um, do you shoot sports at all? For front, but you can turn around and sell the pictures back to the kids. Go up to the captain of the team, not the captain, one of the, the coaches, and be like, listen, I'm going to come out and photograph. I would like to sell all the pictures. All right? Instead of trying to sell it to individual people, just say, here, this is my fee. No matter how many people you have, if you have football, you, what, do you have 20 kids on a team? Anybody? 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 Something like that. And the kids, I don't, know, I don't know Pop Warner. I know baseball. I know all that stuff. But say... Say they have 20 kids. You go up and you say, listen, it could be it's $15 a person. And I'll shoot and I'll give you a disc with all the images and then you guys can do whatever you want with it. So you come out and you shoot a game. You shoot maybe two games and you deliver that. I mean, even 20 bucks. You say it's 20 bucks a person. So now you're at 400 bucks. You're going to make 400 bucks to go shoot one game, deliver them the pictures and be done with it. So that's a, it's a cool angle. It's a cool thing to think about when you go to a local team. Just try to lump it in there. And you say, listen, it's 400 bucks. I don't care if I have 10 people sign up for it. I don't care if I have 20 people sign up for it. It just makes it less expensive, and you let them talk each other into it. And you say, listen, if you were to buy one 8x10, it would be like 30 bucks. It would be 20 bucks for one photo. Now you have the opportunity to get five, six photos of each kid. So it just, it's all sales. You've got to get into the whole sales aspect of it, too. Good. Shannon, did you think of any questions yet? You have a D3000. What questions do you have about it? What do you like shooting? Um, and so you just like shooting landscapes? landscapes? I don't, I'm not a professional. You just like shooting for fun? I do. I'm, yeah. You don't want to take it to the next level? Uh, no, no, I have other things I have to do. All right. Um, I'll leave you alone. I'll leave you alone. Um, I leave it to professionals like yourself. Thank you for leaving it to professionals, mm -hmm. just like myself. Are you watching the clock again? Yeah. How much time do I have? I have about 10 minutes. 10 minutes? i got to film 10 more minutes? Well, you know, I mean, you can wrap it up now. I don't want to wrap it up. I want to answer that guy's question down there who's raising his hand. Okay, go ahead. Okay. All right. So you want to shoot hockey, but you want to know the proper settings. All right, base settings. You walk into a hockey rink. I like to shoot around 1,600 or 2,000 ISO, roughly. Uh, aperture's got to be wide open. Could be f2.8, roughly 200th of a second. If you start going below 200th of a second, you're going to run into problems. Right, Andy? Remember when we shot the baseball game? We, didn't, we had too much sun that day, didn't we? Until it went down, I remember. The sun, there was a, it was a really bright. But when, you, when you're indoors, Drop your uh, ISO, sorry, raise your ISO, drop your aperture, keep your shutter speed up because if, if there's movement, you're not going to freeze them unless, uh, unless you uh, have that going on with your shutter speed. You ever shot hockey? No. No. You shot hockey, Andy? Hockey's fun. Do you need any lens? What, you, just, you said you got a 14 to 24? How do you like it? You love it and it's on your D90 right now? What, um, you have any questions about using it? And there's not much to know about using that lens, is there? Awesome. It is awesome. I want to get a telephoto next. Seventy to two. You have an eighty to two hundred? I borrowed it. Oh. Um, yeah, but I want to get. I was thinking about getting seventy to two hundred Sigma. Or, but I mean, the R two might not make two grand. If you could find a VR one used, that would be a good one to get. Yeah. If you could get that, and the Sigma still not happy about them raising the price. No. Still not happy about that. I yelled at them. They weren't happy. Alan still has Canon 70 to 200s at the old price. So he doesn't have any of the Nikons left. He sold, sold out of those. Just has the Canon. I think he's got like seven or eight of those Canons for Sigma. 
70 to 200. Um, anybody have computer questions? Yes, lens what question. Would you suggest for children, like since they run and they for kids, yeah, your seventy to three hundred that you have is a good start. Uh, but moving forward, a great portrait lens that you're going to never, well, you're going to leave on the camera quite often would be a seventy to two hundred, two point eight. It's just, do you know why? No. Because of the aperture, the two point eight. One, it's going to let in a lot more light. Two, it's going to be much clearer than than the seventy to three hundred. Going to be crisper, nice colors, but it's going to blow the background out. Do you know what I mean by blow the background out? Right. Nice and out of focus, but it's going to separate your subject. Mm -hmm. So when you're focused in on that, on that child as they're running, and then the background's nice and soft and you know, blown out, it's going to make for such a, a better picture. They look less like snapshots and more like photographs. So that's why, the, that's why I push better glass all the time. But you don't have to do that. You can use your 70 to 300. Use whatever you have to get you to the next level. And then, then you can start putting it back into getting the gear. But a 70, the 70 to 300 that you have is a good lens for taking pictures of kids. You know, so I, that's what I when I first started shooting uh, children, it was using an 80 to 200, and basically just blending into the scene, just hanging out, shooting candidates. And that's that's really the most of it. The most of it. Any more questions? You uh, you're out of questions. You're out of questions. Do you have any questions? Yeah, I do have a question. Yeah. Um, you said that, you know, since they do photos, they should try video as well. Uh, what she started doing when she got her D7000 was uh, she would do a photo of the day and, like, keep pushing stuff to, you know, like, better shots. Like, sure. Like, still shots, like, plants or something random. Uh, with, with video, would you suggest for, like, a video today? The like, well, it's going to take more time. So the question is, uh, for if you guys couldn't hear, is, they're taking a photo of the day, like a 365 day project where you take a photo every day, you force yourself to do that. As long as you stay creative with it, that's a good little project to play with. Make sure you put those up online every day so that people start to see and get used to seeing your images. You want them to see your images, you want them to get familiarized with your work so that when they need a photographer or a friend needs a photographer, they're calling you. Uh, but I don't think you should do a video every day. Maybe try doing a video, a minute video every week on something. Uh, try editing it and, and putting together a final project, product and then putting it up on YouTube. And then you can post it again anywhere on your Facebook. Send it to friends. Have them see it. Just challenge yourself to do that. And you're just literally teaching yourself. Rather than going to a school or something like that, you're teaching yourself and, and you're just going to get better. So it, trial and error is great. I think once a week, try something. Try putting together one. Or even if you take two weeks and make something that's five minutes. But do a story of the plant. And do some voiceovers. Just get a microphone or something. Um, I have a wireless mic. Oh. You can get a wireless mic for your D7000. Does Apple make any microphones? Snowball. Snowball from Blue. So you could get a Blue Snowball for your computer at home. It's USB, and that you can do voiceovers. So you can tell like the story of the plant. I just, but you challenge yourself. It's like it's an inanimate object. You could totally put an egg on the table and do a story of the egg. The egg rolled around the table. The egg almost fell on the floor. Then I ate the egg. Done. Scene. People could like it. You never know what people are going to like. Like, Eglin's Best could show up to your website and say, or, or find you on YouTube and say, oh, I just saw this video you did of an egg. We want to use it for a commercial, and we're going to pay you for it. Things happen like that. They do happen these days, right, Shannon? Random things. You could just do weird things. And then look at the, the um, McDonald's commercials where the, the nuggets, you know, those guys were rapping on the street corner. That became a big commercial. So really, yeah, just forcing yourself to, to play around, to practice, to shoot, which is something that I didn't do when I first started. I just felt that I shouldn't be doing that. I should be getting paid to do everything. But you need to just practice. You just need to do it and get better and better. Was that a bird, Shannon? I hope not. I hope it wasn't a bird that just flew into the window. I don't think it was. So, Andy, one more question one more. to put you on the spot for a t shirt? Um, you do a lot of uh, like photography and videography and stuff. Do I do a lot of strobes? I, I'll tell you, I was in Utah. For the weekend, right? You knew that. And I did not even take the flash out of the bag once. 
Shot 1,200 pictures, zero flash, just because I'm not a flash person. So that's just me. I know how to use the flash. I am not an expert by any stretch of the imagination with a wireless flash. I can set up my strobes in a studio. I can set up my soft boxes. I can do any type of thing. It's good to know it. I own the stuff. I just don't use it very often because it's not my personal style. Um, but you know, this shot that you're seeing right now was one, one light in an umbrella in a really small room. And then this shot was uh, no flash. I just, I, I, yeah, thanks. Thank you. That was film, actually, shot on film, Eight, Fuji 800 speed. I prefer not using flash. I like, especially for shooting children, you don't want them to know you're there. You want to blend in, and anytime they see the flash, they're going to be distracted by it. So you don't want to, you know, I don't want to use a flash too often. That's just me. So that's it. That's about, that's, we're going to wrap it up, Shannon. Is that all right? Do you need me to say anything else about Max? Did I fulfill my quota? Did I have a quota? I didn't. They're going to give me a free something today. No. Nope, no free somethings. I think I needed to have just five more people here for something free, right? We needed to hit 50. If we hit 50, we could have done something. So anyway, thank you all for coming out. Great questions. Hopefully this helped out. Did it help you? Yes, very much. Did it help you? Sure. Did it help you back there? And the five people standing back there? Yeah, they're all nodding their heads. Andy definitely helped you, right? Absolutely. All right, so, so that's it. I'll do the, the uh, nice old sign off. Jared Polin, fro knows photo.com. See ya. Those focus, they don't know. They can get shots, they show to blow. A shit knocks them down like dominoes. Yeah, the fro knows, fro toes. All those focus, they don't know. They can get shots, they show to blow. A shit knocks them down like dominoes.